We're here at Officers Row in Vancouver, Washington, about a half a mile from Pearson Airfield, where in 1905, Lincoln Beachy set an endurance record of flying, two hours and 40 minutes. Welcome to Comcast Newsmakers, I'm Ken Ackerman. What's here at Officers Row and Pearson Airfield for your family? Well, let's find out. Please welcome Bill Alley, and Bill is a curator and manager of the Pearson Air Museum. Thank you very much for it's being my here. my pleasure. This Lincoln Beachy guy, from the Lewis and Clark Exposition, he made the first aerial crossing of the Columbia back in 1905. Correct, yes. He, but, he flew his Baldwin airship yeah. across, delivered a letter to the commandant of the barracks here, so it was also the first mail brought across the river. Now you say this Baldwin airship, was that more like a, a dirigible? A... It is a dirigible. It was a great big hydrogen filled bag with a bamboo gondola on it. At the time it was the highest tech technology of the day. Huh. If he wanted to go down, he would walk forward is on the gondola. Right? <laughs> when he wanted to go up, he'd walk toward the back to change the pitch of his balloon. Well, what a storied uh, past from uh, Eddie Rickenbacker to Charles Lindbergh mm -hmm. have been here, but there are, there are better stories than that. Uh, Silas Christofferson uh, takes his plane off from, from the Multnomah Hotel, the top of the hotel yes, for, downtown. In 1912, for the first Rose Festival, to promote it, they disassembled his plane, built a runway on the top of the Multnomah Hotel, which is now the Embassy Suites downtown. Yes, and put the plane together and they flew it off the roof. <laughs> and he lived to tell about and it. And he flew across the river and landed here on the fields here at what is now Pearson Field. All right, tell me more about what, what uh, is so interesting to you. I know that uh, an entire uh, squadron of female pilots landed here. Uh, we've had lots of women pilots here at Pearson. We've had quite a few that learned to fly here. Mm -hmm. Tex Rankin, who was a famous teacher of aviation, had the largest air school in the country, taught a number of women to fly here at Pearson. We had Dorothy Hester, who in the 1930s set a world record for consecutive loops. That record held for 50 years. And it was how many? I believe it was 56 consecutive loops in an airplane. Uh, Edith Foltz learned to fly here. She was the first Powder Puff Derby second place winner. Powder Puff Derby was the first woman's transcontinental okay. air race, and Will Rogers dubbed it the Powder Puff Derby. Now, Alexander Pearson, for whom uh, it's named, uh, was a test pilot who tragically died. Yes, he was one of, one of the Air Service's greatest pilots. He had set a record flying cross-country, the fastest time in 1919. He had set a number of world speed records. In 1924, the Army selected him as their candidate in the Pulitzer race. And this, this plane did not take off from Pearson that we hear above us right now. I hope not. No, it's a little big. <laughs> it's a little big. Yes. But in 1924, the Pulitzer races were the big races uh -huh. in all of aviation. Only the best pilots and the fastest planes. And tragically, shortly before in a practice run, a composite strut failed on his wing and he was going faster than anybody had ever flown before, 265 miles hmm. an hour when that happened. So at the Pearson Airfield, you don't only concentrate on the past, you concentrate on the future with great ec educational programs. Yes, the, the keystone of our program is our Al Coop Aviation Summer Camp. We hold every year, children ages uh, eight through 17. They basically go through a ground school. They have classroom training, they have simulator training in our simulator lab, and on the last day of the week-long class, volunteers come with their planes and take each kid up for actual stick time in an airplane. Oh, I thought you were going to say after the end of each camp they get to take off on the top of the Multnomah Hotel, but that's probably yeah, not the case. Yeah, the, the, the local <laughs> owners aren't allowing that quite yet. So you have people already signed up for next year? It has become so popular, we added a third week this year, and we already have one session close to booked for 2011. All right, Bill Alley, thank you very much. Come join him at the Pearson Air Museum. I'm Ken Ackerman for Comcast Newsmakers. Make it a great day.